Good morning and welcome to the Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church morning worship service. I hope the pastor's message will encourage your walk with the Lord. Hey, good morning, good morning. Glad you're here, and Carol just keeps looking better every week, doesn't she? <laughs> Good to see you, Carol. Thanks for playing that opening for us. And um, Carol, yeah, you guys are laughing. Um, Carol um, wasn't feeling well at the beginning of the week. It's probably not coronavirus. She was tested, and that's why Jane's here. We really do not think it is. Um, so, but out of the, an abundance of an abundance, out of an abundance of caution, she decided not to come today. So that's why um, sister is filling in, and we're glad that she's doing that. Um, as far as announcements go today, today is the last day to get your Purpose Driven Life book. That make sure you grab a hard copy. There's still a couple more in the office as well. I think some of those were picked up. The daily inspirationals we have. A number of copies of these are in the back office. Um, if you want, now in the book, it would say day one, day two, day three. Go through those readings. Um, join our Facebook page, which is called VGBC 40 Days, right? Um, so join that page. There be, I want you to blog on that page some things that God's doing in your life for these next 40 days. And something that maybe you get out of the reading, something that applied to your life. Blog it in there. I want everyone g logging in. I know, it's a pain, right? Um, checking out that page daily to see what someone might have posted. And <clears throat> I pray that we have posted some very inspirational things, things that we learned going through the 40 Days of Purpose. Also, if you so desire, you can download the book, 40 Days of Purpose, to your favorite device if you don't want to um, carry a, a hard copy and if you like to read at night. And I'm a nighttime reader, so reading next to a light with a book, just really not my cup of tea. I like a device, and I can read way into the night. So that, that's always cool. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. Um, so with all of those things being said, any other announcements? Announcements. I know, it's hard, right? What, what to announce? Pandemic, right? <laughs> Get sick of that. Green Bay, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this was, this was given to me by, by sis. So this is, yeah, yes, by, <laughs> by sister. Um, so this is given to me by her. Um, I'm willing to change this in exchange. Let, let sis know. if I'm willing to go Green Bay this year. I, I don't care. I, I think this is a little outdated for a couple of years now. I'm, I'm going to put it to the side, right? So, um, yeah, any other team? I, I don't think a... I don't want to use one from all the Pittsburgh fans, though, either here. Nah, nah, no used ones. So, sorry, I know you want to give your stuff away, too. Um, what team are you guys rooting for anymore, right? <laughs> Nobody knows, right? Um, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Um, yeah, where, where did Jonathan go? He always runs at the right time, doesn't he? He's a smart man. Got to keep my eye on him a little more. He knows just when to get out of here. <laughs> so, um, all right, anyhow, moving forward, we have our kickoff, and that kickoff begins on Monday. So um, just keep that in mind. We'll be talking more about it throughout today. Um, also, the Bible brunch has been postponed, canceled type of thing with just all this stuff going around, right? And we do want to pray for the Decker family. We want to pray for Sis. We want to pray for Jeannie and Jean. They all have the coronavirus. They weren't here last week, so we are all safe. Um, that's, that's a good thing. And continue to practice your PPE stuff here and um, those things. So, um, But, yeah, pray for Jeannie. She's, she's a little under the weather right now with it and, um, you know, holding on. I uh, just pray that things continue to go well for them. Um, pray for the ones in the nursing homes. Any new updates on Betty on the case that was there? Haven't heard anything. So there is that one case there. So we just continue to pray for our, our shut-ins that, you know, be a good thing when this vaccine gets to them. It'd be a very good thing. Hopefully they can be the first to res resume to some type of normalcy, right? 
Um, so that would be good. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love for each and every one of us. We pray for those who can't be here today. We pray, God, that you strengthen ones that need to be strengthened and those who are dealing with the coronavirus, whether they're in a, a nursing home um, where, where their peers could have it, we pray that you would just bring these numbers uh, down. We pray that vaccines would get to them. We pray for the new administration as they come in that they would continue with um, you know, this Operation Warp Speed, trying to get these out, help the manufacturers to be able to get these vaccines out that um, we can start saving um, people's lives, especially, Lord, at our seniors. So we pray for them. We pray that you keep them safe. Um, we pray that you help them to get well, as even they're in the Decker family this morning. So we pray for them, and we intercede there on their behalf. Father, we also are a grateful people that we can be here today, that we can gather, that we can worship, that we can learn from your word, God, which is so imperative for our lives so that we, we don't go astray. So keep us, Father, on the straight and narrow, we pray, that we might um, live a life that's pleasing to you, that's glorifying to you. And Lord, we just pray today that you would just bless Gail and thank you for her willingness to step up and, and play the piano today in Carol's absence. And we pray that you just help Carol to get back to 100% uh, feeling well. I talked to her yesterday. She sounded chipper and strong. We thank you, God, for that. And um, so whatever health, other health issue that we know that it is, uh, we pray you just um, help her there to a speedy recovery as well. Lord, may you just be glorified by today. May you, Lord, just uplift each one. May you be with our students who are returning this week to school as well. And may you um, strengthen them. And may you keep the teachers safe. And will you um, just bless this process, God, as um, they resume back and give them all the energy they need to, to get through a week. Uh, I don't know if we know how to get through a week yet or if teachers know how to get through a full week yet, uh, having students there. And I pray that it goes smoothly there for them, dear God. For the colleges, as they um, begin to open up as well, and you have some returning back, I know Jaden is, many doing online. May you just bless their endeavors, dear God. Bless their education and help them, Father, to excel even in times of difficulty. We pray these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. Also, we prayed last week for Jeremiah. I don't th believe they're here today, but you might have seen the post. He did receive his black belt. So uh, I thought that was really awesome, and uh, they're really delighted for him. So just thought I'd share that by way of communication. All right, uh, Jane's going to come forward, lead us in our first hymn. It won't be the hymn that you see here. It's a different one. They changed it. We have the words up on the screen ready for you as well. Thank you. Good morning. I know Mom sends her love and her prayers. Um, anyone that knows Mom knows she's not much of a social butterfly, but I know that she definitely is feeling the, the hurt of not being here this morning because I know this is the one place that she truly wants to be. Our song for this morning um, is 495 Jesus Saves. If everyone wants to go ahead and stand with me, and we're going to sing all four verses. We have heard the, the joyful sound Jesus saves, Jesus saves Spread the tidings all around Jesus saves, Jesus saves Bear the news to every land Climb the steep and cross the waves onward tis the lord's command jesus saves jesus saves rafted on the rolling tide jesus saves jesus saves till to sinners far and wide jesus saves jesus saves Sing ye islands of the sea, echo back ye ocean caves. Earth shall keep her jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus 
saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves by his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom when the heart for mercy craves. Sing in triumph o'er the tomb. Jesus saves. Jesus save, give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Everyone can go ahead and have a seat. Our next song is 519, Love Lifted Me, and we'll do all three verses. we good aren't we 
And this is the second time that Gal has played since I've been here. And she does a tremendous job, doesn't she? It seems like you do this all the time. <laughs> great. You did a great job. Thank you for, for doing that for us and helping us in that worship. So this is a time of praise. If you have something you would like to praise the Lord for, I give you the opportunity to, to praise him. Has he been good to you? Amen. Still holding on to your jobs? Oh, I don't know about Sam. He's not here today. He probably got fired. So pray that he finds a new job. <laughs> pray for his boss, right? <laughs> Anyone else? Any, any praise you have today? We've got lots of things we can praise him for, right? Even in the midst of a pandemic. If you're here today, that means you don't have the coronavirus. That's a praise, isn't it? Yeah, Gail. Amen. Amen. And Clara is just hallelujah, praise the Lord the whole time you were doing that. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. No, you know, and the reality is, and this is true of everyone that's here, you know this, you're, we're all out and about in some way, shape, or form. You can get it through a drive through at McDonald's, right? Um, so if you're here today and you don't have it, praise the Lord because he's keeping you safe. And you know, there's some of us that have to be out, you know, and, and I don't know one person who is completely in, shut in, you know, except the shut-ins. If, if you have legs and you have a driver's license, let's be honest, you're out and about. You're just as exposed as, as maybe not Gail, but we, you know, you'll go in Walmart, grocery store, even pick up right? Yeah, I know a lot of people do pickups, and, and that's great, and I, you know, great for seniors to do that, but, you know, it, we're all exposed, and if you don't have it, praise the Lord, right? And if you had it and recovered, praise the Lord, and if you have it, it doesn't mean you're a leper forever, right? I was talking to Sis, and she's like, yeah, it feels like I'm in leprosy here. And yeah, we just started our own little leper colony and, you know, outcast, unclean. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's, hey, praise the Lord that we're able to, to go and do the things. Praise God, the economy um, is going to kick back and hopefully not be shut down again, that things can continue. We need it to continue for our country, right? And praise God for a change of leadership. You know, we're going to have a change of leadership and um, pray for their success. Pray for their success. Um, I'm going to post today, I also have a couple sheets up here from Sunday School Left Over. If you're struggling in that area, I think, oh boy, what's going to happen? What's my response? Um, I have a survival guide. And if you weren't here for Sunday School, I try to get it posted on Facebook today. If you want to just pick up a hard copy of my sheet today, you can do that, go through, um, read that in, read that today because we're beginning Purpose Driven tomorrow and look at those verses and you see how to respond to the next administration. So in respect and honor and love and all those things as well. So any other praises at this time? Yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah, and like Betty, they they can't get out, you know, and when you know there's a, a case there, you know, when the when your room doors are shut because of it, yeah, very, very um, dreary time, but it was nice seeing the write-up, and I'm glad you posted that, 
so we get a little extra glimpse into our life. I think it's great that they do that too, and they go and allow them to to write that there for them and get that get that piece out there, um, a way they found to get the people out that are shut in, so to speak. Yeah. Any other praises? All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your love for us. Thank you for keeping us safe. We do pray for those who are shut-ins. Pray, God, that you will keep them safe, help it not to spread in those areas and help the workers that work there um, to be safe or that they're not uh, spreading it there. Lord, as we go through this time of transition of leadership in our country, we, we pray for a smooth transition, a peaceful transition of power. We pray for the success of the new leadership and the whole new administration. We pray, God, that your hand would be upon them. We pray, God, that your hand of righteousness would, would lead them. And if they don't follow that, we pray, God, that you would be gracious and merciful because we know that your judgments are true. Father, we also just pray that you would um, just prepare us, prepare our hearts for these next 40 days. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our media hymn again is the Genesis Project. No, oh, we are survivors. We are surviving, right? And the important question now to ask is what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life that now you survived 2020, right? We didn't know who was going to come out of it, but here we are. And my dear friends, as the Bible would say, and as someone has once said, life is too precious to waste. Do you believe that? It's too precious. Life is a precious thing. So how do you prevent wasting your life? Looking back, wow, it's a horrible 2020, right? But now, 2021 has come. Turning the page, so to speak. What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to make of it? Let's read Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17. The Bible says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because of COVID. Uh, sorry. Making the most of your time even worse than COVID because the days are evil, right? So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now you probably want to circle the word careful because it says be careful. Be careful how you live. Now, the opposite of careful is careless. So the Bible is saying, don't be careless with your life. Literally, in the Greek, it reads this way. Don't stumble through life. Don't just drift through life. You can drift through life and not do very much with your life. You can put your life on cruise, right? And just start cruising through life. Or you can stumble through life and never really get your bearings and your life in order. Now think about it for a moment. It says, make the most of every opportunity. 
we still have opportunities, don't we? Praise God. No matter what, you still have opportunities. I have opportunities. And the Bible says, with those opportunities, be wise. Be wise. This is being careful. And then it says, try to understand what it is God wants you to do with your life. God has a plan for your life in 2021. And if I were to ask you how many of you would say you would really want to know what God wants you to do with the rest of your life? If you have 10 years, 20, 30, you're saying, oh, go down. Okay. If you have one year, two years, no. All right. So you get the point. <laughs> it's kind of scary, right? But what does God want you to do with it? It doesn't matter how many we have left. It matters what we do with what God's giving to us now. Because some of us may have one year left, some of us 10, and some close to 100 if you start going up into the balcony age, right? But here's the thing. Whether you have one year or 10 years, you can waste it. You can waste it. So there's three important questions for our life. Number one, what does God want? Number two, what is it going to take? And number three, why should I do it? So what does all this mean? All these questions, right? What does God want? Well, a casual reading through the Bible. We can summarize the Bible with these words. God wants my life. He wants your life. If you begin with Adam and Eve and going through to the call of Abraham, going through the anointing of David, the judges period, Joshua, if you go through the prophets, major and minor, and then through the epistles with the message to the churches, you get this overarching view of scripture, God wants your life. There's not a single verse in all the Bible, not one, that says you can live your life any way you want to as a Christian. That's pretty strong, isn't it? I can't live my life the way I want to. Not now. Not that I'm a Christian. I have a different standard. I have a different responsibility. I have a different path because of who I am and Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 says this, And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead. Now that's kind of neat. Yeah. If you're still here in 2021, you're alive from the pandemic, right? And if you're still here in 2021 and you're a Christian, you are alive from the dead. And your members of your body needs to be instruments for God. Now, C.S. Lewis once said this, the only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. He had a way with words. Moderately important. If that's really true, and I believe it is, then Christianity deserves everything you've got. If it's not true, if Christianity's not true, we all shouldn't be here right now because we'd be wasting our time 
and wasting our life. But the only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. You heard this saying before, it's either all or nothing. That's the picture of Christianity. When you accept Jesus Christ, you step through that door and you say, Lord, I'm here and I am yours. I'm your servant. I am your disciple. My life is not mine anymore. I surrender to your lordship. That's what Christianity is about. Now, there's a lot of people that, and like myself, at times, we like to sit on the fence, right? Do I have that Humpty Dumpty video? No, never, I don't, just kidding. Um, but we sit on the fence, and we say, well, I don't really know what God wants me to do. And we sometimes use that as, as an excuse, don't we? Oh, God, if you would just let me know what you really want from me. And God has already said, I want your life. But God, just, just tell me what you want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, re no, that's a song. Never mind. All right, going on. All right, went, went, over, went over their heads over here. Uh, younger generation, you caught me. All right, good, good. Um, all right, so here, here's the idea. Here's the idea. Romans, Romans 6.15 says, here, here's what God wants. For, you sh for sin shall not be master over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Romans 6, 16, 15 says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? May it never be. Verse 16 says, Do you not know that when you present yourself to someone as slaves for obedience, you are a slave to the one you obey, either of sin resulting in death, or in obedience resulting in righteousness. See, a lot of times we sit on the fence and say, God, what do you want from me? I want your obedience. Right? That's what he wants from us. And we might say, well, God, I have all these different things. I have my social life. I have my career life, I have my family life, I have my retirement life, and I also have my spiritual life. I have all these things compartmentalized, God. And God's like, no. That's not the way you look at it. God doesn't just get one piece of the pie of your life. God's hungry. God wants the whole pie. Right? Just like if you bake a pie at the house, let's be honest, if you bake it, you probably take the first bite, at least while you're baking it, right? And God, no, Charles gets it all. <laughs> yeah, he shakes his head, yeah. All right, you got it set up right there. Good, good for you, Charles. Um, but <laughs> I might have exaggerated there, I don't know. But anyhow, you know, God, you know, he gave all the ingredients to make your life, didn't he? Doesn't he have the right to say, I want all of you? I want all of you. He wants it all. He wants your whole life. Now, there's a myth, and we've been fed this myth because we've gone through McDonald's or we might have worked at McDonald's, right? And the saying there is, you can have it your way. Right? Oh, that's Burger King? Is it really? <laughs> All right, I scratch that from my notes next time, right, Burger King? What's McDonald's saying then? What's that? I'm loving it? Okay, all right, yeah, I'm loving my life. I'm, all right, I put them all together now, all right? McDonald's saying, I love my life, and, and Burger King, you can have it your way, right? I know, I eat there all the time. I should know these slogans, right? Um, well, there's a myth, that's a myth. You can't do that in your spiritual life. You can do that with your physical appetite, maybe, but not with your spiritual life. In fact, the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Important verse. Look at it with me if you would. Matthew 6, verse 24. I tried to cross-check my facts more closely. Stand corrected. 
Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. No one can. Circle the word can. That's very important. He doesn't say you should not serve God and money. He says you can't do it. You can't do it. It's impossible. So what he's talking about, it's impossible to have two number one priorities in your life. Impossible. You have priority number one, priority number two, now you can priority number three, priority four, um, but you can't have two of the same, can you? And God says it like this, you can't have two number ones in your life. Now, there's a lot of things beside money that can um, certainly push God out of first place in your life. For example, work can push God out of first place in your life. Play can push God out of first place in your life. Sports can push God out of first place in your life. Hobbies can push God out of first place in your life. Friends can push God out of first place in your life. Dating can push God out of first place in your life. Your own family can push God out of first place in your life. The reality is first place should be reserved for God. There can't be two number ones. So really the question is, What's going to be first in my life? Right? That's what it boils down to. What's going to be first place in my life? Um, is it going to be building a career? Now, you think about this. As people begin their life, you think, ah, Lord, if I, if I just get the job I want, get employed full time, and, and have, have things right, everything's going to get hunky door. I'd be sold out for you then, God. God, if, um, you know, as soon as I get my family raised, right, you'd be first place in my life. Lord, as, as soon as I, I get my health exactly where I want it to be, you'd be first place in my life. God, as soon as um, I have all my money saved up for retirement, I promise you then you'd be first in my life. God says it like this. You shall have no other gods before me. All those other things that can take first place become an idol, becomes a god. Anything that pushes God and his plan for your life to second, third, fourth, or fifth is absolutely the wrong way to live your Christian life. Remember, there's that door. When you asked Jesus to come in, you also took a step forward. Amen? And you're saying, God, I give you my life. I believe in you. I trust in you. And you're submitting then to what? His ability to save you, his ability to be your savior, and his lordship over your life. So, one time, Jesus was telling a story about this, and it's recorded in our Bibles in Matthew chapter 8, verse 21. Let's just turn there. Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8, we find this story here, and in the beginning of verse 21, when Jesus saw that large crowds were um, following him, he, he then went out, verse 21, um, and, you know, Jesus said this in verse 20, foxes have dens, birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Lord, another of his disciples said, first, let me go bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. You know, so what was happening here is that people were making 
excuses. Jesus was saying, follow me. And they're saying, yeah, I, I do that, Lord. But first, let me do this. Let me get my life in order. Lord, let me first is a contradiction with your life. Amen? You know, Jesus is saying, hey, I'm not worried about where I'm going to lay down, where I'm going to sleep. My, my life is in the hands of my father. And this disciple that wanted to be a disciple of his said, no, let me go do this. Let me go do that. Let me go bury them. Still another said, you know, I, I just got married. I can't do it, Lord, right? You know the parable. It's in each of the Gospels there. Um, and others said, you know, I, I can't do this. Um, you know, my, my father's sick. My work, my business, my business is very important. Um, my, my wife is very important. I just got married. And what are each of these ones doing? Priority number one, not the Lord. Whether it's wealth, work, or a wife. They can take the place of God if we're not careful. Right? Anything that takes first place in your life takes the place that rightfully belongs to God. Let me let you in on a little secret. I believe this is true. Always true. If you put God first in your life, he would take care of all the rest. Do you believe that? If you put him first, he'd take care of your work. He'd take care of your spouse. Isn't that a good thing? You know, he will take care of all the other things. And you see that when he's first, everything else just neatly fits into place. But when we try to cram other things first before God, uh, we're making a foundation that's going to crumble, right? We're going to make something that's not going to last. We're going to make a mess of our life. So these disciples wanted to come up to God and say, yeah, I follow you, but I got to do this first. It's a life contradiction. The next verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. In everything you do, in everything you do, Proverbs 3, 6, put God first and what? He will direct your paths. He will crown your efforts with success. That's what God would do. If you put him first in your life, God will, will prioritize your life for you. And he will crown you with success. Now, there's not a person in this room who doesn't want to be successful in whatever you do, whatever your passions are, whatever you, whatever you enjoy in life. And the Bible says, you know what? If you put God first, it's going to make everything else better. Now, one thing I like about football is when you watch it, when a player scores, when they give glory to God. Or when they kneel before the game. Drew Brees is a good Christian guy I'm rooting for them. They didn't lose yet, did they? Okay, they played today or something? Something like that. Okay, making sure. I haven't really followed it that close. You know, and, and you know, you think about it. And let me just use Drew Brees as an example because he's a good Christian guy. You know what? He knows at the end of the day, it's just a game. Because I believe, he believes, God is first in his life. Players out there who don't have God first, oh, it's all about the game. You lose, you, you see all sorts of bad things out of them, right? When God's in your life, it helps you to prioritize and how to conduct yourself wisely. And he gives success. And what does God want? He wants all of you. Second question. 
what does it take? What's it going to take not to waste my life? What does it take to be all of what God wants me to be? What does it take to develop myself, to reach my fullest potential in life? I'm going to say it in one word. And you're going to cringe. You're going to scream. You're going to say, please don't say that word. Discipline. Discipline. You don't accomplish anything in life without it. God designed life that way. You know, um, Jeremiah, congratulations. Um, I know his mom will be watching the video. And, you know, you get a black belt in karate. Just don't walk on the mat the very first time and kick a board and get a black belt. You probably break your ankle, right? Or your wrist or whatever you're, you're using. Um, anything in life that's worth something is going to take discipline. Now, there's a verse in the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. And it says, He is on the path of life who heeds instruction. But he who ignores reproof goes astray. So you cannot be a disciple of the Lord without being disciplined. The two go hand in hand. They go together. They almost sound alike, don't they? Disciple, discipline. Sounds alike for an obvious reason. They are alike. You can't be a disciple of Jesus Christ without discipline in your spiritual life. Now notice another verse, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. The Bible says this, very plain, very simple. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For the purpose of godliness. Now, what in the world is this word discipline? Discipline can be described this way. It is delayed gratification that's what discipline really is if you want something now to have it your way to love it now and to just reach out and grab it you're probably gonna miss it right but if you discipline your life and if you live your Christian life with some discipline there's a delayed gratification you're saying you know what I work for it I work for it. It's not just going to happen. I will work for that. And that's all it is. Delayed gratification. Discipline is doing the difficult now in and, and order to enjoy the benefit later. That's what discipline is. Now, some of you don't need to have this definition of discipline. Maybe you've lived very disciplined lives your whole life with your job, with, with the things that you got involved in. Um, you know, and maybe you plan, maybe you're always on time. You know, you're conscientious, you got good work habits. Um, some of you are very disciplined. And there's, if we break apart each of our lives, we find that there's some things we're very good at and some things we tend to slack at, right? It's true in everyone's life. We, we kind of have that pie model and, you know, the reality is, in life, you can't do it all. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let me just say this. Um, we're all disciplined in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you you say, well, I'm not very disciplined, but I never miss my favorite TV show. All right, so you, you at least develop some discipline in your life. You always can turn that on at the right time or continue your, your series on Netflix, Right? Yeah, 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 got a routine. Don't interrupt me. Um, out of the room when I'm watching this. You know, it happens in every family, right? You got your favorite thing. That's what you're going to sit down. That becomes your discipline. So we all establish that we can all at least be disciplined a little bit, right? We all have that. Um, now, let me ask you a big question. 
What if we were all just as disciplined with our spiritual life and devotions? Oh, why did you mention that? Well, because we're going to get through the 40 days of purpose. And one thing it's going to take is a little bit of discipline, right? Um, let me, before I get to that, have you look again here at um, 1 Timothy 4, 7. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Spend your time and energy in exercising, keeping yourself fit. Keep yourself spiritually fit. Um, maybe you off to a good start on your New Year's resolutions. You weren't going to eat the chocolate. You weren't going to do this. You're going to exercise more. And I encourage you, do it, right? Um, take your health seriously because we're living in a pandemic, right? Make some extra time for that in your life. But also, don't ever neglect your spiritual life. Don't ever neglect it. It will come back to bite you in the worst way, right? It does. Spend your time, spend your energy keeping spiritually fit. Um, discipline is delayed gratification, but discipline also requires this in anything you ever do in life. It requires letting go of something. If you're going to be disciplined in something, let's just go back to the TV, whatever TV show, you're disciplined to watch that. You know what you just did? You just said, I let some other things go in my life for I can carve out some time and sit and watch this. Discipline is not just delayed gratification. It's also saying, you know what? I'm going to let go of other things so that I can be disciplined in this area. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, is a verse that goes hand in hand with this. I want you to see this verse. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Very important verse. I'm sure you heard it. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and every sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And when it says there, lay aside every sin, sin entangles us. Sin will weigh you down. Sin will drain your spiritual energy. But what does it mean, every weight, every encumbrance? You know, um, a weight is something that's not really a sin. A weight is something that's not necessarily wrong. Have you thought about that? Um, a weight could be a number of, of things. It could be a relationship. It could be an expectation. A weight could be an activity. It could be a memory. It could be a fear that you, 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 you don't let go. You know, it could, a weight could be a thousand different things. But there's things that will weigh you down spiritually if you don't let go of other things. Ever realize that in life? Ever say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to try to live my life for you, but then you don't, you know, you start hitting those rocks, those bumpy roads, it gets hard. Well, why is that? You got too many things dragging you down. You got too many things holding you back. And you have to say, you know what? I need to cut loose on some of those things. I need to make space. I need to make time. And I want to be honest with you. If you just keep adding things to your schedule and adding things to your schedule, you'll never be disciplined in anything. It's true. You can't keep adding things to your schedule. Sometimes you have to subtract things to get what you really want. Sometimes you have to just um, take, a, take things and say, no, I'm not going to do this, for I can focus on this. I need to make this better in my life. And the same thing's true with our spiritual life. You just can't keep adding things into your life and in order to get through the 40 days of purpose, there's going to be something you're going to have to eliminate from your life. You're going to have to carve out some extra time. You say, well, I don't have any time. Then you have to go back and say, where's my priorities? 
where's the priorities in my life? I have to make some time to make sure God's first. So there are things that need to be put off in life. There's things that, you know, um, that maybe we procrastinate about um, because we have to do that. And you remember this, the, the parable, and not the parable, the story in Luke chapter 10 with Mary and Martha. I won't have you turn there, but it's something to think about as we think about this idea of discipline. Um, Jesus and Mary and Martha were there, and Mary was distracted, it says, by her many tasks. She kept trying to add things on. The Lord's here. We got to get ready. We got to get ready. And Martha, they're sitting at the feet of Jesus learning. Let me tell you this. You would never complete all your tasks. You would never get your house the way you just want it to be. And if you do, you're not living in it. Right? So the, the reality of things you just can't keep adding to your life things. You have to say, I need to choose something that's better. Something that's better. And, and Mary was at the feet of Jesus. I mean, Martha was there at the feet of Jesus. And you know what Mary had? Spiritual ADD, attention deficit disorder. And if you run your life like that, you would never grow into the person God wants you to be. Won't happen. You'll be running off chasing all these other things in life. Let me ask you, do you find yourself like Martha? Um, your task list, is, is it distracting you from focusing on God? Is your life so busy you don't have time for 40 days of purpose? You know, think about it like this, my friends. The average person in their life will live 25,550 days. Doesn't sound like enough. Can't you give 40 of those to God? You're going to stand before him someday. 40. To go through and say, God, what do you really want? with the rest of my life. Jesus said, Mary has chosen the better part. Um, and that means, you know, that's what it comes down to. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the better part? Um, Psalm 39, verse 6 says, In all your busyness, rushing ends in nothing. So true, so true. The third question I'm going to wrap it up. Why should I do it? Why should I do it? Why should I make an effort to grow spiritually? Why should I let go and, and discipline myself with this delayed gratification to grasp onto something and let go of other things? Why should I do it? What benefit is it for me? That's a tough question. And maybe your response will be the only answer. But maybe I could just suggest another one. The cross. Do it because Jesus went to the cross for you. Make, make an effort for him because he put all of his effort into saving us. Amen? So Monday, we'll be here before we know it. When we wake up, if you don't take a nap this afternoon, during some of the football games. Wake up, decide today, what time am I going to carve out to read? Brief reading every day. What time? Will it be the morning? Afternoon? In the evening? And go through that. Log on to the Facebook page. Share what God's doing in your life. Then we come back next week and talk about it and celebrate it. Amen? He's enough? All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for all the effort that you did to save us. The discipline of taking up your cross. 
and going before us to save the world with all the sins of the world laid upon your back, you did not flinch. You were determined to lay your life down for us. And Lord, you've called us to a life of being a disciple, a life of discipline. Help us to do that. And may these next 40 days inspire us like never before in our personal life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing song is, my bulletin sheet's down there. Somebody tell me our closing song. What a friend we have at Jesus, yes. And we stand together and sing. Thank you. It's number 412 in your hymnal, if you're going to use your hymnal. And we're just going to do the first verse. Thank you for watching our morning message at the Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church. If you do not have a regular place of worship, consider joining us Sundays, Sunday school at 9 o'clock and morning worship at 10 o'clock.